What if I told you that fans have figured out the entire starting area of Tears of the Kingdom and they've figured out a lot of what's going to happen or at least have made some pretty safe assumptions. We have a map. We have some other details to share with you guys. And I'm really excited about this. I don't consider this to be massive spoilers or anything. This is mostly just stuff that people put together based on the official listings and mini maps and everything put out there uh, by Nintendo themselves. That being said, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. And if we somehow get there before Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we'll give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. We'll also give away a special Zelda OLED. Oh, and why not give away one of those special pins from PAX East? And maybe we'll have some other special 100K celebration giveaways as well of other items. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. Let's get into this video. So before I show you the map here, because I will warn, obviously, if you're trying to avoid absolutely all potential spoilers for Tears of the Kingdom, you should avoid what I'm about to show you. I want to make sure that we give proper accreditation. So the base map template was made by a user over on Reddit called Mr. JCBA. We'll link to his user account if you guys are interested in checking him out because I couldn't find the original post. I, I didn't look too long to be fair, but we'll at least link back to him. And then we're going to link to a thread over on the Tears of the Kingdom Reddit where somebody went ahead and went through this base map and uh, put together what they feel is the most likely scenarios for what we're going to have to do uh, to obtain our four abilities. Now, what I want to point out here is this entire map is put together in the sky. It is of a massive sky island or sky island template, and it is put together from many maps in the actual, well, trailer, right? The gameplay, right? We have that little mini map section down the corner. You're able to piece together a big chunk of sky based on stuff that appears in that mini map. Also, we have a falling down uh, graphic that we have showing off some of this land as well. So without further ado, here's the map. And there's some interesting stuff here. You see a presumption on where things are going to start. You know, we start our new game at that temple-like structure. Uh, and then we have to swim and climb the stairs. And then we do a shrine, a Zonai shrine there. And that's where we end up with the ultra hand ability. Then we'll have to grind down or rail down, you know, potentially using some grapple ability or or some crazy stuff. Maybe we could end up flying down, etc. cetera. Uh, and, and we deal with some puzzles and some mechanics down there. And then we'll have to eventually build a simple raft. That's where we use that ultra hand ability to cross a kind of lake looking structure like we saw in the actual gameplay footage. Then we get to another shrine where we learn the Ascend ability. Uh, we end up having to use that Ascend ability to escape some sort of cage uh, that happens to be near a cliff, and we end up being able to build another powered raft. And this powered raft, I believe, is the one that they talked about uh, in the gameplay footage. Not that prior lake, but this current one because it's a bit smaller. Uh, and then we'll, ha we'll work our way to shrine number eight at the bottom, at the south of the map there. Uh, and that's where we learn the fuse ability. And then we go along and do some other things uh, until we eventually get to the last shrine where we learn the last ability that we have in the beginning. Um, and it's, as, as it says, I can't go higher yet because the rest of those islands obviously deal with other various levels of height. So we don't really know how that works yet. This is just what we're able to piece together of what we know of what appears to be the starting area. Again, we don't know 100% that it's the starting area, but we're sort of basing this off the gameplay. The fact that he had these those abilities up there, that there was a shrine already on the mini map when he was up there. That shrine symbol was obviously a shrine that was completed. So we just kind of assume that we get our abilities up on this sky island. Now, we have a couple of looks at this. You know, like we seem to hollow like a gate tall enough to stand under. Again, this is just a, a, a using the ascend ability to progress. Also, uh, we can see a bit of a sky shot of what potentially is that starting area uh, with only swimming needed to get here. Can get back here from anywhere on the island. Again, full credit goes to the Tears of the Kingdom Reddit, uh, not only for creating this map, but also to user Snarky, McSnarky II, uh, for putting this together. And uh, you know what? I'm going to read a little bit of his speculation on this because he did put this together. So he said, so I've been speculating that we'll get the ability to grapple objects or traverse on rails on the tutorial island. Until now, I've been assuming this would be a separate ability that I've been calling Power Glove. This is because of a very unique rails that show up in this particular part of the tutorial so far that are too high and flat for someone 
uh, minutes into the game to start shield surfing on. But I'm no longer positive this actually needs to be a separate ability. I still think we'll be able to do these actions, but I think it's possible that it'll just be part of the ultra hand instead. No need for a separate ability. Just like Fuse lets you toggle between Fuse into your hand or uh, shield slot with a different button, I think ultra hand could also give the option to grapple if you highlight something that can be grappled too, such as the monorail. Now, again, this is making a pretty big leap of assumption because ultra hand hasn't appeared to work in a grapple-like function before, but who knows? In this case, I assume our first shrine will be the one with the rail since it appears to be reachable from anywhere. Now, it is, again, possible we could just shield surf on that rail, but that's neither here nor there because we haven't seen a single rail shield surf yet. Um, and it says uh, th there might be some sort of issue because the concept art and the official game picture, the rail should be going to the set of islands to the north, but the gameplay from Aonuma clearly seems to have one so going somewhere else. So... But there's a lot of things to take into consideration when we're figuring out how the beginning of this game is going to work. I do think we're going to get a greater look at the tutorial area overall. Uh, I, you look, when previews drop for this game that the media play, I bet you the media gets to play this full tutorial area, and we're going to get a bunch of gameplay of it before the game comes out. Uh, so we're going to have this fully fleshed out, and we'll fully grasp this in a few weeks. But it is interesting just seeing what fans were able to piece together from one gameplay session plus a few screenshots. Like, it's really crazy uh, how far Zelda fans can go uh, to do this. Now, I actually noticed them starting to piece this together last week, but I haven't really seen it fully fleshed out with this way and maybe a potential path that we we're going to go on uh, to conquer different shrines. So, look, it's obvious at this point that there are shrines in this game. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the art book, but the art book itself sort of confirmed that we would have shrines a while ago. Now we had the symbol on the map and the mini map that confirmed that shrines were back. And yeah, I assume the shrines are just going to be Zonai shrines instead of Sheikah. And we have no idea what the reward is at the end of the shrines. If this is, again, how we extend our stamina and health, or if they're putting different rewards at the end, if there's going to be less shrines. Again, very clearly they're taking inspiration from Breath of the Wild. It is a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. Some people might be disappointed that the starting area is, again, a sky island, but then also it's four shrines before we can leave, probably. And that might you know feel very, very similar to to Breath of the Wild. So I'm going to be very curious how they've changed up this tutorial area just to make it feel super, super fresh. But again, here's one more look at the map. And there's, you know, as I said, you see a shrine to the north, a shrine to the south, a shrine to the east, and a shrine to the west, which is pretty safe to assume that's exactly where those shrines are going to be. Uh, you see a lot of water. And I, I find this to be really curious how much water is present in these sky islands. Uh, the water appears to dissipate and or evaporate when it when it's falling off the cliffs, but it, it's very curious how much water made it up here and why all of the trees seem to be yellow. Uh, they noted in the gameplay session that, you know, you're not really going to find these yellow trees on the surface, and I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean. Does it mean we're in the golden land, uh, or does it just because of the elevation, the trees don't get enough oxygen, so then they don't turn green? I, I'm curious if there's an explanation since Aonuma specifically pointed out that the yellow trees are basically only in the sky. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, and I'll catch you hopefully on our live stream tonight where we'll be playing Breath of the Wild Master Mode.